Hi folks, it's Steve here from AnalyticsInAction.com. In today's tutorial I'm going to cover joining tables using Transact SQL. Like a lot of aspects of database and analytics, joins are pretty straightforward. You just need to be aware of some core concepts and a few tricks and tips and then practice. So why do we need to join tables? Well, databases are typically what you'd call normalized. That means the data they contain uh, is often spread across lots of small tables. Um, this eliminates repetitive data and makes data easier to update in these databases, but the downside is for analysts, they then have to join lots of these tables together to create a suitable data set to report on. So in today's video, I'll cover the following topics, creating queries using the query editor, which is SQL Server's uh, graphical query tool. Then we'll move on to joining tables with T-SQL code. Uh, as a part of this, I'll talk about aliasing columns and tables and why aliasing is a good idea. Then I'll cover off the three core types of joins, which are inner joins, outer joins, and cross joins. And then to wrap up, I'll show you how to join more than two tables. As a um, FYI, joins is a topic in the querying Microsoft SQL Server exam, so that's a 70461 exam. This is the um, first exam in the Microsoft BI certifica certification. And in this tutorial, I'll cover off the joins topic in that um, and that certification uh, in enough detail to satisfy the exam requirements. Okay, so if you want to follow along with this tutorial, um, the sample database is available on my website, at least the code for it is, so just navigate to um, analyticsinaction.com forward slash joins and then go down to the bottom of the page, click download T-SQL code to create database and tables. We'll get this script here, so we highlight all of that. Click copy. Now we open up SQL Server Management Studio. And then we connect to the database engine. And then what we do next is click New Query at the top here. And paste the code in. Okay, so the first, um, so we're going to do this in uh, three steps. So the first step is to create a database called Table Joins. So select all the code between start step one and finish step one and hit execute. So there we've, what we've done now is created uh, that, um, that database. Next step is to create three tables inside it. So those three tables are called disasters, reference, and and this type and the code to do that is between here start step 2 and finish step 2 so then we hit execute again commands mean successfully completed the final step is to populate those three tables with data so again start step 3 down to uh, down to where is it? Finish step, finish step three, and then we hit execute. So we just refresh, hit the refresh button over here in the Object Explorer, and then we'll see that the database and three tables are in there. Okay, so now on to the practical component of the tutorial. So what we'll do is we'll create a query using the Query Editor tool. So the Query Editor tool is a, um, a graphical user interface, but similar to the um, QBE grid in Access, if you're familiar with that, and allows you to create queries without writing any code. So to open up the um, Query Editor, we click on New Query, um, go to the menu, uh, query menu, and select design and query editor. And what we're going to do is we're going to join two tables. We're going to join the disasters table and the reference table. So we'll select uh, disasters, go add, and then reference, add, and then we close that. So what we have are our two tables. We first need to join the tables. So we're going to uh, the join key is this type ID, so we drag it from the disasters table to the reference table. 
and then we're going to select the uh, the columns that we need. So we're going to go year, country, location, killed from the disasters table and then disaster type from the reference table. And that's pretty much it. So that then generates the code for us. We just highlight the code and hit execute. And that's um, that's it. So what, another useful thing with the uh, with this query editor tool is you can reverse engineer um, code as well. So if someone gives you a complex piece of code that say joins several tables, has lots of different types of joins in it, you can highlight that code and go query, design and query editor, and then you'll get the visual representation of that query as well. Um, so this uh, query that was created was an, was an inner join, um, but you can also create lots of other types of joins. So an inner join is where um, we'll return values which are in both tables. You can also create um, left outer joins or right outer joins as this one is or you can create um, full outer joins as well. But I'll talk about those other types of joins in a little bit more detail um, later on in the tutorial. Okay, so let's now move on to hand code and queries. Um, here we'll revisit the um, inner join. So inner joins return rows from tables where join keys match. So if there is, for example, an employee ID and two tables, an inner join will return that row. Um, as for the basic syntax, um, I've included it in the um, in the sample code. So this is it here. What I'll do is I'll drop, create a new window, and I'll actually paste in some complete a uh, some completed code here. So tell what I'll pull through, pull through this example here as well, so we can see. Okay, so the first thing uh, we want to do is add the database name. So here, the database name is table joins. So this um, stops the query from getting confused um, and thinking that you're referring to another another um, database. Um, the next thing you want to do is, I generally, rather than selecting the columns, quite often what I'll do is I'll go down to the table name. Um, so obviously we want to add in two tables. So what we do is we want to join the disasters table and the reference table. And what I've done here is as you can see I've got a um, what we call an alias after the table name. So an alias can include, you can use a syntax as um, in a uh, alias or you can um, uh, or you can leave it out. So this comes down to whether it's sort of a personal choice thing um, if you want to use as the as syntax. Um, it makes it sort of clearer that it's an alias but then it adds a little bit of um, you know it's more more code that you're that you're writing. I'll leave this out for the moment but it'll work with both. Um, so what we do is you add an alias so that allows you to refer to that table in the code but in an abbreviated form. Um, so what we're going to do is use D as the alias for disasters and R for the alias for reference. That then allows us when we uh, write the, uh, when we, f we f select what columns we want to return, um, we can use the alias in the sort of qualified name. So we're referring to each column with the database it comes from and the column. And that uh, prevents any ambiguity. Uh, <laughs> So it stops you for um, situations where if there's the same column name in different tables, it stops SQL from getting um, getting confused. And then the final thing is referring to what uh, the join key, and we're using the dis type join key to uh, connect to the disasters and reference um, uh, tables. So let's select that. And that's it. So one thing to note, I've also used an alias up here as well for um, the killed column. So, you know, this is number of people killed. You can select that. And that's pretty much a um, an inner join. So um, fairly simple sort of stuff. Um, 
So that's key points to remember. Use aliasing. Um, it'll shorten your code. You've got an option to use as or not. And that's pretty much, um, pretty much it. Okay, now let's look at the other um, common sort of join, outer joins. So outer joins include left outer joins, right outer joins, and full outer joins. Outer joins return all records from the table specified in the join. So a left outer join would return all records from the left table. And the left table is defined as the table specified before the join statement. So in this example uh, here, the disasters table is to the left of the inner join statement, so that would be the left table. The reference table would be the right um, table. Uh, the these um, outer joins are best uh, sort of explained in by going through an example. So if we replace the join statements, we'll go with a left outer join. So we're going to return all the records from the disasters table. And uh, and let's just run through that. So what we see here. So the left table is the disasters table. So we're going to return all the records from that. But we see what what we see here is a mismatch coming from the uh, from the right table, the reference table. So that's why it's coming. That's coming back null. Uh, if we call that a right if we run change that to a right out of join we'll see different results coming back so this will return all the records from the um, from the reference table and that's why we get now get more nulls coming through from the disasters table because there's no matching this type ID and then what we have for the final type of join is a full outer join. So this will return all records from both tables. So this will return the largest um, number of rows. So this is 34 rows. So we'll get um, nulls being returned through to both um, and from both tables as we're getting mismatches between the two. So that is um, out of joins. Okay, now for the final type of join, so cross joins. So cross joins aren't very common, uh, but they are in the syllabus for the 7461 exam. Basically, cross joins multiply all the rows from one table against all the rows from the other. So we have 30 rows in. Uh, in table 1 and 12 in table 2, a cross join will return 360 rows of data. So essentially all of the combinations. So let's look at, let's run a query here. So we'll just change this to cross join. And let's just return the country column from the disasters table and perhaps we'll return the disaster type. Just to, this will just make it a little bit simpler from the um, from the reference table. We're going to uh, so what we need we don't need a on statement here because essentially it's just multiplying all of the um, all of the rows in one uh, table by all of the rows in the other. So it's not relying on a join key. And let's just run that. So we see here, in this situation, we've got 360 rows returned. So that's um, 30 from the, uh, let's just show that. So disasters has 30, um, 30 rows of data. We can see that down in the bottom right hand corner here. And there's 12 in the, in the reference column. Uh, reference database. So that has why it's returned 360 in, um, in this example. So let's just, and that's pretty much it, cross joins. Um, I haven't really used them too much in, in sort of practical um, and sort of day-to-day -day, um, work, but um, handy to know. 
Okay, now for the final topic, um, joining more than two tables. A key point to remember when joining more than two tables is that conceptually the join only actually takes place between two tables at a time. So all joins are evaluated from left to right. So for example, if we have this join here which joins two tables together, if we add want to add another table in a join and we're going to join it to the dis type table, um, this is now joining to the result of the previous query. So we're going to join this on the, I think it's the category um, ID. So tell what, let's just alias this dis type. So we're going to join that dis type um, category ID. And then replace that. And the category ID in the first query is the reference. Um, it's in the reference table. So that should give us what we're after. There we go. So, we've, um, oh, we actually haven't returned a specified what column we want returned from that um, uh, from the dis type. Um, Table. So we're going to return, let's return the, what should we do, the uh, human origin uh, column. There we go. So this should produce what we want. So that's pretty much, um, pretty much it. That's um, joining multiple tables. Okay, and one final tip. Quite often when you're sort of writing these longer queries, the it starts to get a little bit, sort of unformatted and ugly and a bit hard to read. Uh, one of the tools that I found quite useful is this thing called PauseSQL.com and basically it's just a um, uh, formats your SQL for you. So you just highlight it, just drop it in and see this looks a little bit more readable, it's done all the indents. Of course you can do this yourself but it, this is you know a nice quick quick way to do it. Um, so I hope you found this um, tutorial useful. If you, if you did, subscribe to um, subscribe to the my channel on YouTube so just hit the subscribe button below the um, the video um, also come across to my website uh, analyticsinaction.com there's stacks and stacks of information on SQL Server things like integration services reporting services analysis services and writing code um, and yeah hope to um, hope you'll uh, tune in for subsequent tutorials